Hey, what's up you guys? Aaron here from Clever Programmer today. And today we are just going to be talking about tuples in Python. You don't know what that is yet, but you're about to find out. Let's get started. All right, so a tuple is a, uh, first of all, it's a weird word. I don't know what the heck it means, <laughs> but um, that's how you spell it, T-U-P-L-E. And um, all a tuple really is, it's a list with uh, constraints. So um, in a previous video, I think we, we, we uh, went over lists. So a list uh, list just looks like, like this, right? With brackets, you have um, something like that. Um, all a tuple is gonna be is gonna be the exact same thing, but with parentheses, okay? Like that. So now L is actually a tuple, so I'm gonna change this to a T. So a tuple is just, it looks just like a list, but it has parentheses instead of brackets. Um, that's not the only thing that differentiates them. Um, that's just what it looks like on, on the screen when you're coding. That's what a tuple will look like. But the difference is um, a, a list could, could have anything in there, and so can a tuple. Um, they are similar in that sense. You can index into them using um, that bracket notation. So let me just show you that real quick, actually. Uh, print t at zero. Um, as you can see, the one prints out because that's the first one. So you can do that just like a list. Um, you can read from it, um, but that's pretty much it. The thing, the thing about tuples is you can't actually change it. You can't, um, you can't add elements to it. You can't remove elements to it, and uh, I think that's about it. You can't add and you can't remove, and you can't change um, things within it if they're immutable. Um, if they are also unchangeable, so that's that's kind of um, a little bit, a little bit weird to to explain. But basically, you can't add or change. You can't add or remove elements to it. It's a very, it's a very um, stable, structured kind of data type. So um, you can overwrite the entire thing. So if I had t here and then I and I overrode t by setting equal to five, then yes, its entire tuple will be deleted. But I'm not actually changing things to it. So what is this good for? Um, you might be asking. Okay, so what's the point of having a tuple if I can just use a list? Um, well, there are sometimes you want to be more secure with your data. So let's say you had a um, a credit card, okay? A credit card, just call it credit card like that. And you have uh, multiple things on a credit card. So this is what I was talking about, structured data. So a credit card has a, a credit card number, right? So let's put that in first. Um, I think it's like 16 digits. I'll just put one, two, three, four like that a bunch. You'd have uh, your um, the credit card number, you might have a name on there. So let's just say first name or I don't know. <laughs> oh, let's put a uh, Joe Rogan because why not? <laughs> and then you would have an expiration date, which could be like um, December 31st, 2019 or something like that. Or on credit cards, I think it's just uh, like 11 slash 19 or 20. There we go. November, November of 2020. And then um, a security code. You usually have like a three digit or four digit security code that you also need in addition to the number, right? Let's just put, put it in like that. So you have a credit card here as a tuple. The reason we, we would have used, used a tuple here is because um, every element of the tuple has a consistent meaning, okay? So um, none, of, none of this can be changed. I cannot go in and change this number. I cannot go in here and change this. I cannot go in here and change this. Um, but uh, it's all together as a whole, um, together. Um, so it, usually you would be using it for things like this. Um, one thing that is that it's very useful for is actually having a list of tuples. So let's you, let's say you had multiple credit cards, then you could create a second credit card. Let's just create a second one, like this, okay? And then let's just change, uh, or whatever, screw it. We can just leave it like that. So credit card one and credit card two, and then let's just say we wanted to have a list, um, credit cards with an S, and then we could just create a list with credit card one and credit card two, okay? And then we could print out all of our credit cards, just like that. So you got, are you guys following? Oh, we created two tuples here, two separate tuples using the parentheses. Um, um, and then we stuck them in a list and we're gonna print it out. So this is handy because, let's run this again so it looks nicer. This is handy because 
as you can see, we have a bunch of credit cards here that are um, structured. They're, it's a structured kind of idea. And then you can just put a bunch of these together. So you can actually change this list, this overarching, this wrapping list on the outside. You can always add more credit cards to it because it's a list. But within each of these little credit card tuples, you can't actually change or add anything to it because we don't want it to. It's a very um, stable, structured kind of data type. All right, so that's pretty much tuples. Um, one, one cool thing I want to mention about tuples is because they're so structured, you can actually do this cool thing called unpacking a tuple. Okay. So let's um, get rid of these here. Um, let's just get rid of everything. Let's say we have a person, okay, a variable called person. And we're going to make it a tuple. And we'll say that every person has a name, right? We're not going to call a name, we're going to call it Nancy. Okay. Nancy pants, because I like that. <laughs> Nancy pants. And then um, age, let's put um, 25. Okay, so Nancy pants is 25 years old. And uh, let's also put um, favorite food. Okay, pizza. <laughs> like that. So we have a person here, okay? Um, as a tuple. And because the tuple is structured, a uh, cool thing we can actually do in Python is actually just go like this. We can uh, create three new variables. So name, comma, age, comma, fav food, favorite food, okay? We're going to uh, put this here like this. And then we can actually say this is equal to person. So what's happening here is we are unpacking this tuple or we, uh, we're unpacking this person tuple. So this person tuple has three aspects to it. It has a name, it has an age, and it has a favorite food. So that's what we're, what we're specifying here. We're specifying three new variables called name, age, and favorite food, and then we're setting it equal to this tuple. The cool thing that happens here though is now I can actually print out each of these things individually, completely individually. So pretty sure you guys see where I'm going here. Um, now we have these three variables separately. So, so instead of going like, okay, person at zero and person at one and person at two, et cetera, we can actually just unpack it this way and use more descriptive names instead of person at zero and person at one and whatever. So when I run this, as you can see, all three pop out because we unpacked this tuple. Uh, one other cool thing is you actually don't even need these parentheses here. It's something really cool you can do. So you can say, okay, name, um, name, age, and fab food. You're actually setting three variables completely in one line. You're setting it equal to this tuple, which is going to correspond in order because the tuple is ordered just like a list, but it's structured so that you can actually unpack it this way. Um, very, very useful thing, especially if you are iterating over a bunch of tuples. Okay, let's say you have, like I said, you could um, iterate over a list. You can also iterate over a, um, a list of tuples. And then in each iteration, you actually unpack um, the, the tuple in the loop itself. So let's, let's see what that would look like. So let's say for name, age, fav food in, um, oh, this would have to be a list. Let's just create two people so you can see how this works. Very useful thing with tuples called tuple unpacking. Um, Nancy, she's lying. <laughs> Joe shirt. <laughs> that one's not as funny, but whatever. Age 20 and favorite food is pasta. Okay, so we have person one and person two. And then we are just going to create a people list equals person one and person two. Uh, I, I could have just stuck these tuples directly in here, but uh, it's just better to use variables like this and then putting the variables here. It's more clear, okay? Um, I'm just creating a list here of uh, a list of two people and each person is a tuple. So now we can say, okay, let's iterate over people. And since we are unpacking this, um, it's going to iterate this, this loop is going to iterate over this entire list. And each time it goes through, it's actually going to unpack these tuples so that in the iteration, I can actually print out um, everything in here. So I can put just like print name. Uh, actually, it's just the same as here. Let me just copy and paste this. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, just like that. So what, and then we'll put a space. An empty, an empty print statement will just print nothing, okay? So we have everything um, here for two iterations. And when we run this, um, what is wrong in people 
person is not defined. Oh, okay. Well, let's just get rid of this. We don't need this here. And uh, yeah, let's get rid of all this. Oops. Yeah, because that was giving us a problem because I changed this up from person to person one. This is, um, it wasn't working anymore. So let's hit run. And that, as you can see, this loop ran twice and it unpacked both of these tuples. Okay, so you can hold you can hold data, structured data in tuples, and then you have very easy um, structured access to them via unpacking. So a very useful thing in Python. Um, I like using them a lot, especially in loops like this um, down here in the for loop. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this um, this video, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.